Hello everybody, this is Soul, and this is another episode of Casual Gold, the show that, uh, you know, I'm just gonna kind of get right to the point. I'm gonna talk about how to make 5 million gold in less than a year, without sweating too much over it. Now let me be really upfront and say that this is not going to be the silver bullet of gold making. I'm only introducing this one method, just one method that you can pick up or not. There are a lot of great gold making guides out there, so don't stop here, keep looking, find the one that you like, and well, you know, check out some more. For those of you who are returning to the channel, you might have noticed that I haven't done very many casual gold videos, and that's because even years later, my habits haven't really changed. I'm still doing the same thing, and I'm still doing just fine. Making a little bit over 500,000 gold a month with about uh, maybe like half an hour to 40 minutes a day spent on gold making. So in this video, I'm going to give a bare bones example of what it is I do to make oodles of gold. So what's this video for anyway? Why is 5 million gold even important? According to recent announcements, and if Blizzard really has the stones to go through with it, the mighty Caravan Brutosaur, which is the mobile auction house mount that costs 5 million gold, well, that's going to be removed from vendors, and will only be available from the black market auction house when the Shadowlands expansion launches. There's already plenty of debate over the ethics of this action, the theories or conspiracy theories that are around it, but this isn't the place for it. There are tons of forums and comment threads where you can be upset, but if you're here, it's because you want this mount and you don't have the time or the real money to throw down. The foundation that you need to build, whether you're going to make 5 million gold or well, just enough to get you by with a WoW token each month, is that for the moment you need to change your discipline if you haven't already. Time's ticking and there's gold to be made, so you've got to shore up on your extra expenses like respecking, transmog, and otherwise dumb purchases. Also, specific to this mount, you want to get this thought in your head. You will never spend more than 5 million gold for this mount. That's because with a little bit of elbow grease in this guide, it'll hopefully put you on the path to buying it from the vendor. But this guide isn't a guarantee. Even if you come up short though, don't worry. You still won't spend more than 5 million gold because I will tell you outright, please do not at any point spend more than 5 million gold on this mount on the black market auction house. After all, you'll have waited for this long, I think you can wait a little bit longer. In fact, later, if you do see someone bidding 10 million gold for this mount, find them and laugh at them because they just threw away a lot of money. Alright, let's get right to it. Step 1, it's a pretty long step, but you're going to raise an army. We're going to take advantage of the current WoW anniversary event going on right now until January of 2020. Korak's Revenge is a time walking version of Eltorak Valley. A character that's level 60 and higher will gain massive experience just for being there. So on average, it'll take about 2 or 3 hours to level a character from 110 to 120. To maximize your experience, try to have as many XP boosting items on you like heirlooms that are updated to level 120. Use the anniversary buff while it's available, the draft of 10 lands from those service medals, and the Dark Moon Fair buff if it's available. Now you might be thinking, ugh, leveling alts, total pain in the ass. And I admit that I'm someone who only really puts their time into one character to play, I feel ya. But if nothing else, this event is a really, really good time investment for alts that you've been ignoring. Remember a while back, people were crying over not being able to pay for freehold leveling runs because that was nerfed? Well, this will cost you nothing. The more alts you have, the better and a level 120 will have pretty easy access to late game content. And of course you can also take these alts into old content and easily smash through everything too. And people are peddling a conspiracy to sell WoW boosts, right. So let's skip ahead. Hopefully you have a couple of alts, two, maybe three, ready to work. This gives you a lot of options to work with. Personally, I work with 10. I know it's a lot, but well, for the little bit of work that I put in, totally worth it. So no matter the number, having all these alts comes with a lot of flexibility, options, things that you can choose to do with them. For example, you can do emissary quests for gold. It's not the most efficient use of your time, but it's something. And if you're interested in getting these characters up and going, well, you're kind of double dipping. Great. The same goes for boat missions. You can load your alts up with crafted follower equipment to amass resources to sell things like uh, herbs or fish. 
But this isn't very efficient, considering the time and the gold needed to get all that equipment together. It's a big frontline investment without a really guaranteed return. Another option is to set up a garrison for each of your alts. Garrisons are still a great way to earn some easy gold with efficient use of the tavern and the trading post. With the resources out of the garrison that you can make for almost nothing, engineers can create goblin glider kits and tailors can create 30 slot bags, both of which have proven to be a pretty good and steady gold maker even years after Warlords of Draenor. But we want these alts generating gold sooner rather than later, so we're going to stick to my method selling herbs and inscription goods. Now you might be thinking, uh, really? Inscription? Glyphs? Like, who buys glyphs? Well, you'd be surprised. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to take all of your alts to Dalaran in the Broken Isles and make all of them herbalists. One of your alts should also learn inscription. So what you're going to do with each herbalist is take them out into the Broken Isles and have them get up to level 25 in Legion Herbalism. Basically, pick 25 herbs. This will get them access to Herbalism world quests in that region. If you don't have world quests on your character, just talk to Khadgar and complete the Uniting the Isles quest. That'll unlock world quests in the Broken Isles. For this method, that's like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you need to do for your alts. Because the whole point is to get access to a specific world quest that gives you an herb called Felwort. It's a very rare herb that's very profitable. Sometimes you'll get a Felwort Seed, which is also very profitable. This quest pops up for all of your herbalists at the same time, every two days. So you're only going to be sending your alts out every two days. Now, with all things involving the Auction House, your final result is going to depend on your realm's economy. So you're going to want to consider what to do with this Felwort Herb. So you can't just sell the herb and the seed outright. It does sell reasonably well. Or, you can grind that stuff up with your scribe and obtain the following materials, rosate and sallow pigment. These also sell very well because they're materials for many legion recipes, notably glyphs that these days are a little bit harder to obtain. On top of that, while this also very much depends on your server, glyphs themselves can sell extremely well. It might seem silly that a glyph that changes the look of your warlock pet would be worth so much, but hey, it's their money and you're trying to take it. Also, with Inscription, you can make other items like Tome of the Clear Mind, you know, those items that let you respec your talents on the fly. These also sell well, but you also want to pay attention that you sell them at the right time, like during raid nights. If you want to have the most flexibility with your scribe, though, you're going to want to learn all sorts of recipes from each expansion. For example, the Glyph of Stars is extremely popular for Druids. It sells for a couple of hundred gold a pop on most realms, and it only requires vanilla herbs like Peace Bloom and Earthroot. It's really cheap to make. Or you can take the Rosate Pigment and tree it down to whatever ink that came before Legion. But if you're going the Glyph route, this also means that just doing Felwort quests every two days is not going to give you enough materials. So on occasion, I go out and farm for herbs manually as well. For this purpose, I fly over to Valshara in front of Darkheart Thicket, and I kill those flowers and skin those for Dreamleaf. Dreamleaf is your best source of rosate pigment in order to create Legion glyphs, and like I said earlier, you can down-convert this pigment into ink from the earlier expansions too. That way you can power up and learn recipes very quickly. Make more money, meet demand, and you know, you get the idea. So, I've been mentioning Legion Inscription, but what about BFA Inscription? These days, the herbs from BFA have really gone down in price, thanks to Xenanthid being the real herb of value at the moment. Using my realm as an example, you can buy a stack of herbs for about 600 gold. If you mill the materials and successfully sell the ink or the pigment, you can make anywhere between 2 and 4,000 gold per stack, which is pretty easy profit. You do have some options on things to craft, like Vantis runes, tomes, and war scrolls, but you definitely want to keep an eye on the price to make sure that you're selling at a profit. But certain glyphs in BFA will sell for extremely high prices, mostly because the recipes are harder to obtain, meaning that you've got to put in the time and effort to farm said recipes. But depending on the price, you can score tens of thousands of gold, and this is all just based on that initial investment of 600 gold. This, of course, comes after all of the work with building up your scribe. But right now, you're at this point where you have to ask yourself, is this a time investment worth taking? I mean, do you want the Brutusor mount or not? Now, like I've been saying, to make the actual gold, these items have to sell. And to do that, you've got to post them. 
This time we'll be using the new default UI that's coming in patch 8.3. Herbs and most inscription items are commodities, so they should be pretty easy to sell. With the auction house open, all you have to do is right click on an item from your inventory and it'll automatically populate. Press the max button right over there and it'll list all the items in your inventory. The starting price of the item will match the lowest price listed, but you know, feel free to undercut or even overcut if you like. If nothing is listed, then the price will be the vendor price, so make sure you fill this out correctly. Personally, I tend to post twice a day, and if I can, I set the duration to about 12 hours. So to summarize what to do, first use the current promotion to level as many alts as you can stand, to have a nice stable of alts to work with in the future. To get gold easily without too much time investment, start off by learning Legion Herbalism on your alts that are at or above level 110 and get them to level 25 Herbalism. Then every two days go around and get that Felwart. Between the herbs and the seeds, you'll score tens of thousands of gold for about half an hour's worth of flying around, gathering, and posting auctions. Between that, consider what to do with that Felwort. You can sell it as is, sell the materials you get from milling, or craft items like glyphs with these materials and sell those. Just keep an eye on your pricing on your realm. This method is meant to be as low impact on your time as possible. If you're really jonesing for the gold, use this method alongside other methods that you're already considering using or doing already. For me, it's been bumming around my garrison and making gliders. So I really hope that this method works out for you, that you're able to make tons of money, and you're able to buy like 10 Brutosaurs by the time Shadowlands comes out. Realistically though, it's going to vary, and it is going to take some hard work and a lot of discipline to keep this up. Making gold in WoW can be pretty easy, but more than anything, you want to find a method of making gold that is fun for you. So maybe this will work out for you, maybe not. If you have other gold making ideas to share that can possibly be done in tandem with this method, feel free to share it in the comment below. Right now, we're all just here to help each other out with different ideas to share. So if this video was helpful, at the very least, please hit that like button and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. In a few months, I'll check back with you later to see how you're doing. But until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.